All right, here we are. I think, I don't know, maybe the fifth year or something. I've lost track, but uh, it was Basil World and now it's Watches and Wonders. But me and my man, Kevin Christie, who I met in the hallway of the comedy store talking watches, here we are. And uh, we are just a couple uh, a couple more goons out there on uh, YouTube talking about watches that uh, are unobtainable. <laughs> and uh you know uh but it's still fun and we have that the the small core following every year that's like are you guys going to do the watch thing so yeah here we are how are you bud i'm good what's up 30 people <laughs> who care <laughs> it's 34 dude don't short it <laughs> but it's a sick skateboard back there what do you got uh, Santa Cruz recently reissued the Klaus grab key exploding clock in the original light blue for their 50th anniversary, I think. And I bought two of them, but my girlfriend thinks I only bought one. <laughs> one of them came in the mail while she was house sitting for someone and I hid it in the closet because I'm 46. <laughs> hell, hell yeah. You know what they say? Rock one and stock one. <laughs> Like, I even know how to sell it. I would just have to give it to you to sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because I just got Nick Cave's uh, tickets this morning. And uh, it was the first time that Ticketmaster actually worked for me, where I yeah. signed up on the fan website, you know, and got a code. Yeah. And I ended up getting both nights, Friday and Saturday. Oh, wow. Which is fucking insane. And the Friday night, what are you barking at, Gertie? I got second row. Oh, wow. 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 Crazy. Yeah. Anyway, so looking forward to rocking and stocking that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, bud? Uh, you, you got some COVID today, huh? Maybe. I mean, it feels like it. I tested again, still negative, but I feel like I have COVID and my girlfriend fucking has it. <laughs> I, I I don't understand. Three years, dude. We lasted over a thousand days without it. This is the first time. We haven't, I've never had it. Oh, you never had it? No, she never had it either. I'm a two-time winner. (laughs) Moral of the story is we don't got a lot of friends. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We never got it. That's the trick to, uh, that's the trick to uh, not getting COVID. Don't have friends. Yeah, yeah. But so, I don't know, man. It feels like I have it. So, I don't know. I'm just hanging out, see what happens. Yeah, it's hilarious because I uh, I was thinking about uh, I did that full Marcus King tour and uh, zero COVID. I was around millions of people. Yeah. So I think that I have so much antibodies from having it twice that uh, yeah. it's just not going to get it again. I wonder. I wonder. Um, I'll be honest. I kind of like all the new Rolex stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, it's funny because it's more kind of uh, what we what Rolex would used to do, where it would just be subtle stuff. Yeah, and, you know. And then there was a few years of just craziness, like the left hand uh, GMT Sprite. Yeah, and, and stuff like that, to where you're like, whoa! And now yeah. they're coming back into the uh, the thing, you know. Um, that. Now, you know, Aristotle sent me over the New Daytona last night, and I immediately was like, oh, that thing sucks. And then by the morning, I was like, ooh, I like it. Which one? <laughs> the, the steel one with the steel around the ceramic bezel. So it's now, yeah, yeah it's got that little thing. It's the way it's the way kind of like the Paul Newman held the edge held the bezel in kind of. Yep, yep. They the one thing though they made the subdials uh, thinner and that watch is already so hard to read. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will say I think it's a it's an interesting it's a pre- if you think about it it's a pretty big change that with that platinum one they put a display back. Oh man! And uh, uh, first of all, you and I absolutely worship that platinum one, and uh, that color combo to me has always been the holy grail. For me, one watch, rich guy. That's the one I'm buying. And now with the display back, bring it on with the new. Well, movie. it also kind of it's like I know they do that. I think with the one of the Cellinis, but 
it's a very like, okay, we're like a uh, luxury, luxury brand now. Like they're, cause even, even Rolex's nicest watches, they're still kind of tool watchy, but like, this is like, okay, no, we're going to show the movement. We're going to show the finish because their prices have gotten wilder and wilder. And so now this is like, look, this thing is going to cost a grip. I'm sure that platinum one's like over 50 grand. And, uh, but they're like, we understand that people in that price range need to see like the finish. They want to see the gold fucking perpetual movement thing. Like they expect a certain level. You know, I think it's them really trying to kind of compete with AP, complete, compete with Patek, you know, companies like that. I think the platinum one's 72, by the way. Yeah, it's a fucking it's a very expensive watch. It's yeah. 72 grand. You're in Patek world. So you have to like you can't just put a normal case back on there for that money. You have to kind of say like this is a in-house movement. It's it does all this stuff and like here's this crazy finish to it. You have to justify the price a little, you know. Now the black one's gone. Oh, the black dial's gone? It's gone. Whoa. Crazy, right? That's interesting because that's classic Rolex where like the one because, you know, of the black dial and the white dial, people wanted the white dial more. So they get rid of the dog and now it's in going to be insanely collectible. Oh, absolutely, man. Dude, Milgauss not on the site anymore. That's gone. And we already know why that's gone, because next year they'll come out with it, the new version. You know, I wonder if the new version will have a green crystal, though, because that's always been the story is it's a hassle. Yeah. I'm hoping it has the green crystal and I hope it goes right into the Air King uh, body. So you have the, um, you know, the uh, crown guards. I I think I bet you they go with a bezel like the old, old one, like, you know, a sport bezel with the numbers and shit. Yeah, I'm hoping. I mean, that's a dream watch. Milgauss with the bezel, you know. Yeah, but I think I bet the, you know. I texted the three people I know that have Milgausses, and I was like, congratulations, you made a little money today. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I think they're like, the cheapest we've seen is like nine grand. Eight, yeah, nine. and they really dropped in the last like four months. They were 12 grand forever. Now I've, I just saw that mint one on HQ for 9,200. Yeah, and I think that they'll go back to 12 in the next month and probably you're looking at 13, 15,000 and probably in the next two years, that'll be a, I'd say three years is a twenty thousand dollar watch, maybe. Although there's a lot of them out there. I still think it's uh top five uh Rolex ever released. Green crystal, orange lightning bolt hand, and those weird tic tac uh colored markers. Yeah. I it's it's the one watch that really bothers me that it doesn't look good on my wrist. Kills me. It kills me. It kills me, dude. It's just something about the shape of the case. It looks like baby hand wearing dad's watch and i hate it because i love that watch so much and it looks stupid on me and it makes me want to cut my own arm off and buy someone else's so i can just wear that watch i would that would be my one watch in the world it's a masterpiece watch and there are people that don't like it it's very confusing to me (laughs) what one thing about rolex that i was thinking about this morning the milgauss being gone is uh with me, I'm always into the new, 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 and here it is. Over a period of uh, 12 hours, I've always already fell in love with the Daytona, the new one, and so I'm like, well, yeah, that male gas is going to be a classic now. But Rolex really seems to uh, figure it out with me at least how to be like, ah, oh, fuck the old one, man. Look at the new one with the crown guard. That's what they did yeah. with the new king, you know? Yeah, the new. I uh, even. That 40 millimeter Explorer one is cool. Like that is kind of like, if we're being honest, like to me, that is the ultimate clean, big size sport watch. Like that is the perfect. And I like that they kept the 36 for people like me. Like it is, although dude, I I don't know if you want to skip ahead, but that new perpetual with the rainbow dots on it. I fucking love it. Master. Dude, because it's, you know what it is? It's all the colored dials from the other ones in one dial. That's what it is. I fucking love that watch. I it's, call it the gumball. Dude, it's so cool. Wacky is where, I I, know, I mean, you and I have talked about this. As you get older, like once you're past middle age, 
wacky watches kind of become the thing. You notice like older dude collectors, it, it all turns into like weird watches because you're bored. You've had a Rolex, you've had whatever. Like that's where you start. You start looking at those Alan Silverstein, Silverstein ones. Like you want a weird, cool watch. And dude, those two rainbow ones, the puzzle piece ones, those are cool. I I love them. I think they're fun as shit. Like, I think they're cool for men, for women. Like, I would rock that bubble one all day. The puzzle one has become my all-time grail. Dude, the date? The date function with the peace sign and stuff? Yeah, heart and the and love. And on the days, it clicks up like love. And it's Dude. all Brody Stevens watch. Like, positive, push, <laughs> believe, you know? It's that's like, what I mean, man. It's, like, fun. It's, like, it, there's something about it that's, like, hey, you're rich and it's sort of stupid that you're buying this anyways. So have a good time. It's like early 2000s Louis Vuitton when they first went rainbow and everyone was like, yeah, everyone was like rainbow. And then it, people went nuts. It's it's old. To, it's like Takashi Murakami, you know, that artist who like he's the one who did the rainbow bags for Louis Vuitton. Like he kind of started that thing. And it's like that. And I've, I do that thing looks so rad. I'm glad it's not like gold because steel with that dial Dude, I wonder what that thing's going to cost. I mean, we know it'll be expensive, but like, I wonder if people will like it enough to where it's like really expensive. The puzzle one's only platinum. Whoa. Yeah, unfortunately, or else I would own it. That would just. Yeah, I like the bubble. I like the bubble one better. Yeah, yeah. The bubble one. Well, man, the bubble one, it's just straight gumball to me. It's so cool. And it comes in all the sizes, 31, 36, 39. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing um, that I'm really dying to check out. They reshaped the Daytona body and the Explore One body. And uh, we're going to get into this. The Titanium Yacht Master is no longer that weird. The Yacht Master was that body that was kind of rounded. And now it's uh, straight up a sub style body. Yeah, that uh, honestly, that watch is rad looking. Oh. The markers are too big. Like the, the mark, you know, they all, the new markers are very big on all the sport, like the subs, but that titanium bracelet, I get, I bet it's so light. And the fact that the, I, I've never loved the chunky bezel on a yacht master, but the fact that it's matte makes it look a lot better. That's a pretty sweet looking watch, to be honest. I love with. that watch. I absolutely love it. It's 41, 42 millimeters. Sorry. It's 42. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's 42, but it's going to feel super light and not crazy. Yeah. And um, what's it going to cost? I wonder. It's like titanium. Do titanium they up? always more. With titanium is more. Yeah, which is weird. They got different case sizes now, man, which is really bizarre. So GMTs are still 40. Subs are 41. Yacht Masters are 42. And Sky Dwellers are 42. So it's all over the board. Explorer is 40. Uh, you know, it's really wild to keep track. It's pretty, it's pretty strange to go from with that Explorer to go from 39 to 40. Yeah. Like, like why? <laughs> well, it's a new body. So that's what's really appealing, man. It's a total new body. If you look at the side view of it, it's so slim. Everybody's going slim. Tudor did it finally. Uh, Rolex, you know, with that. With that uh, Air King, it, that's like the finest body they've made in a long time. Now they're just doing it with all of the line. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, though, if if I'm going to tell you what I think the best new thing is, that 1908 Perpetual, take all my money. I love it. Dude, that is such a home run to me. Oh. Uh, fuck. That lollipop hour hand, come on, dude. That that the hands, the numbers, you get the nine and the three, dude. That is the watch. If if they made that in steel, yeah, for like seven grand, because I'm sure the gold's gonna be like it'll probably be a similar price point to the Cellini, so it'll be like 12, 13, 14, 15,000 bucks. But man, 39 millimeter, that watch is what's up. It's great. Now, now it's uh, 1908. People were talking about it like, oh, what's up with that? That's not when Rolex started. It started in 1905. 1908 is when he got the, uh, I guess, the patent or the, you know, the, uh, what do they call that? Where you own the name or whatever, you know, whatever that is. Copyright. He owned yeah. the trademark for trademark Rolex. 
But yeah, that's when Rolex, I think, became Rolex. But man, that watch is killing me. Killing me. It's grandpa, and you and I are so into grandpa. Uh, uh, that watch rules. It's incredible, dude. Oh, I love the open <laughs> case back, the grandpa dial. The the like the the kind of uh, edge, the bezel, the kind of penny, what, uh, what do they call that coin edge? Yeah. On the bezel, like that watch is so sweet looking. Yep. There's a, lot, there's a lot of home runs, man. I, I know people are gonna complain because they're gonna there's nothing like we didn't get a coke, we didn't get a coke, but hey man, uh this green dial sky dweller is a destroyer for me, man. Dude, no, no, no. The the blue green oh, the rose gold one? Unbelievable. That is one of the nice unwearable in public because you will get robbed, but it is one of the nice, that watch is nice looking, dude. Sky Dweller Robbery Edition. <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Larceny. Yeah, yeah, the Grand Larceny. I want the uh, Lose a Hand model. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that Sky Dweller with the bluish dial in rose gold is so rad looking. Yeah. Dang, dude. That thing is bonkers. As soon as I saw it, I immediately went like this. Oh, the Russell Peters model. I went, oh, the Tom Segura. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally the Russell Peters, man. It's yeah. beautiful. It's kind of Miami Vice. Me, yeah. Just baller. Yeah, yeah. It's, dude, it is so rad. That one is so rad. I'm honestly, though. That two-tone GMT, you know I love a dirty-ass two-tone yeah. on a Jubilee two-tone. That is a cocaine watch, man. Well, it's a. Did you look? The bezel's black and gray. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. It's rad looking. That's that's a total Raider fan watch. Like, oh hell yeah! Oh no, that watch that that watch is for for successful Latinos all day. Yeah. Like. That is a sweet looking watch. Like that's a badass looking watch. Oh yeah. Hold on before we go on. I got a I got a sponsor here. Hello Fresh. You've been dieting, Kev? What's going on? You got I've used to I've I've used Hello Fresh before. I actually really like it. Yeah, oh my god, man. I mean, Hello Fresh is no joke. Like it's actually a a, a great sponsor, especially if you want to just keep your weight like so many people, you know, they just don't have time to cook and they got heavy during COVID and they don't know how to escape it. Hello, just Fred. say my name. Just say my name. Yeah, there it is. March is National Nutrition Month and HelloFresh makes it easy to choose delicious uh, dietitian approved meals. I love this stuff. Simply look for the dietitian win tag on their menu. Choices for meals under 700 calories and with one third less sodium. That's another thing, man. I don't fuck with salt anymore. You know, it's like blood pressure. And also, you never know uh, how many calories you're eating. You know, it's just nuts, man. With the cost of groceries going up and up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. Here it is. You're going to get a great deal. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Delray60. That's D-E-L-R-A-Y and then uh, the number 60. And use the code Delray60 for 60% off plus Free shipping. Come on, man. Free shipping. Hello, fresh. You get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store, and that way you won't get COVID either when you're out there. Count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit, and it really is. Get that right there. That is HelloFresh.com slash Delray60. Use the code Delray60. All right, let's get into Tudor. Uh, dude, there's some good shit in there. It's nuts, dude. It's nuts. The white, the white dial GMT is awesome. Yep. That thing is awesome. That's, you know, if you if you follow old Rolexes forever ago, they made a white dial Pepsi GMT. There's very few of them. They made it for like an hour. And if if you, they're worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, they're insanely rare. 
a total dream watch for us, man. Just yeah. in white. And it's also, it's like kind of an off white. It's a cool white, man. They really nailed it on this. Yeah, it's like pearlescent. So it's white, but it has like a silvery sheen to it. And uh, yeah, that, I don't know. I wasn't sure what the size, but I get it's probably 39, you think? It's the same. It's the uh, Black Bay uh, Data or yeah. uh, GMT. Nothing changed from last year except for the dial color on that model. I really like that other model with the blue dial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It comes in all the sizes. It comes in 31, 36, and 39. Yeah. I think that's a great watch. In in 36 and 39, that's a great watch. Well, there's the Black Bay 54, which is new, which is, uh, man, they're just riding the fuck out of this Black Bay name. But Black Bay 54 yeah. is a, um, a tribute to the first one they did in 1954, and it's 37 millimeter. And it is fire, man. It's just, is that thing's 37 millimeters? Yeah, I call it the Kevin Christie. I was like, yeah. yeah. And it's got the uh, the slide glide, um, you know, uh, adjustment on your wrist. It's like a cool slide glide. And then it has the lock over clasp. And it's 37. It just came out today. And it's available this week right now. All, all the Tudor's watches are available this week, which is rad. That's really smart, actually, because they're the only ones where you can actually go buy them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder I, what that 37 costs. I think it was 3600 bucks, man. Come on. Oh, man. That, is a, that is a value. Yeah, it is unbelievable, you know, because I was thinking about it this morning. People hit me up all the time. What watch should I get? And the first thing I say is, well, what's your price point? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. If you look at it, to me, it would be that, that Ravel, you know, that I got that Tornick Ravel for a yeah. thousand. Yeah. And then next up would be Tudor Black Bay 54. If you if you're in the three grand. And then if you're a little higher, you go Omega uh Speedmaster. And after that, I would say the Explore 140 millimeter. And yeah. those are right all under 10 grand and life or watches. Any of them that you got, you would wear them for life. Yeah. Any of those watches, you're just going to strap on and you wear it every day. Also, if you're small wristed, an old date just, you can still get them for around four grand, 36 millimeter, either Oyster or Jubilee. And they're, uh, I mean, it's to me, it will always be the perfect watch. Like it's my favorite watch forever. But yeah, there's, so it, it really does depend on what price range you're at. Under two grand, if you're small wristed like me, there's a million old Omegas. There's great old IWCs. I'm a huge fan of old IWC now. They're a great value. You can get a gold one for under three grand. Like they're a rat. I also got a. I, I have a tank Cartier tank now that I got. If you're if you're old going full old man style, that's just a simple watch you can wear easily every day. But yeah, Tudor is a to me the fact that they've kept their price point down like that is cool because they could have raised it like everyone else in the world. I'm yep. sure with inflation they could have justified the cost, and that that watch could be five grand, and we wouldn't even at five grand we wouldn't even be complaining that much. We'd be like, yeah, it's more expensive, but it's still a really good value. But at thirty six hundred, you could just wear it forever. Now the Tudor that blows my mind. Uh, first of all, I always loved the Black Bay. But the body was a little chunky for me. And they slimmed the body down this year, went burgundy bezel, which yeah. blows my mind. And they have a goddamn Jubilee band now. And the it's certified meta movement. This is a crushing Black Bay 58. This is the Grail 58 now to me. Yeah. And the solid end links, like the whole thing is just, again, it's like, that perfect durable sport watch where you just you bump it in you you hit the wall you bump it into your car like it doesn't matter it's just like a super durable it gets better with age this like it looks cooler as you scratch it up like just wear it till wear it to death you know the body is, is slim now man they're really like they're killing it and that Jubilee band they got Jubilees all over their watches this year and man they look great yeah, and if you've never had a watch with a Jubilee bracelet, like they fit better. They just they hug your wrist better. 
So they're just a more comfortable wear. They do rip the hair out of your arms. Yeah. <laughs> but you get used to it. Yeah, only once. Then the hair's gone for life. Yeah, you, it, it shaves your arm once, and then you're fine. <laughs> yeah, Tudor is amazing, man. Every year we just love them. Well, they're slowly just kind of creeping. I think it's they're just slow as Rolex turns into kind of a very high-end company. Tudor is just slowly creeping up as the sport watch alternative. That's a good, it, good value. Like it's becoming what Rolex was in the nineties up until about 2010, you know, where things started to get weird. I mean, honestly, things started to get weird with the Milgauss. So you're talking 2006 to whatever, like that first one was like the one you couldn't get up until that point. There wasn't a watch that was that hard to get. Even Daytona's you could pretty much get them. In in a, a from an authorized dealer, it wasn't a huge waiting list, but it was that that green crystal Milgauss that changed their company as far as availability. And since then, it's just gotten kind of like you know harder and harder, and then people start stealing them. But Tudor just slowly creeps up as this company that just is making you know watches that are simple and not super out of your price range and are to me worth the money, you know. Yeah, and the, you know, just four or five, six months ago, they dropped that uh, titanium thirty-nine millimeter Pelagos, and that is just a mind-boggling watch to me. Uh, yeah. It's got the original square markers uh, that I love, and yeah. it's titanium, and it's and that cool. squared off hand, like it's yeah. rather. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. So, uh, you know. I'm really fired up to see that Black Bay 58 with the Jubilee and Burgundy band. I really, I really like that watch a lot, man. And just Tudor. Was the 54 that's 37 millimeters? Is that the one you sent me that Lady Gaga was wearing? No, no, no. This just came out today. So uh, she was wearing that 925, the Sterling Silver model, which is, um, you know, that one. What's the bezel on the 37 millimeter one? It's black. Okay. Okay. So it looks like the Black Bay 58, but yeah, it's smaller. It's black Bay 58, but uh 37 millimeter and uh and it just kind of a slimmer body and everything. Does it still have the rivets on the side of the bracelet? Oh, you know what? That's a good question. I didn't notice that. Uh I'll have to look, but you get you can get two bands with it, you know, you can get the cloth. Yeah, yeah. that's a good question, man. See, I kind of don't. I've never really loved the rivets on the side of the bracelet. Yeah. A lot of people hate that. Uh, you know what I always say? You never, ever, ever see it. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's, it seems like the kind of thing you, you, you stop noticing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. Let me look. God damn. So this burgundy dude with the Jubilee band just crushes me. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Black Bay 54. I'll tell you right now. God, it's really nice. It's it's 3850 on the state on the band. Uh -huh. It does have the rivets. It's a gilt dial, which is oh. fucking insane. For and those of you listening, gilt dials seem like a thing you don't care about, but man. That little bit of gold is nice looking. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And yeah. then, you know, they changed the um, the long hand. It's like, I think they call it a pencil. It's like long and cool. It okay. goes all the way to the minute track, dude. It'd be funny if on the website it said, we changed the long hand. Now it's long and cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Kev. This really is a watch for you, man. 37 millimeter. Well, that's like, you know, the original subs, the first Submariners were 36 millimeters. Right. Like if you look at the 5508, they weren't huge. A Paul Newman Daytona is 36 millimeters. The new Black Bay Meta is 4450. It's uh, with the Jubilee band. That's a damn good deal, man. Yeah. You know? Oh, God. And the body, you can tell the body is just so much slimmer. I saw some guys messing with it on YouTube and, you know, they didn't want to trash it too much. Like the old ones are hamburgers. And they're like, ooh, a nice, nice, uh, slimmer body. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a slim, that's the one thing. Tudors can be a little tall. 
trying to make them a little shorter as far as how they sit on top of your wrist. But again, at 37 millimeters, it doesn't matter if it's a little tall because it's not a huge watch to begin with. It's really, to me, it's that if you're at 39, 40, 41 millimeters or 42 millimeters, that's where the height of the watch starts to get noticeable because it's already a large case, you know? Yeah. The 37 is a slim, slim case. Wait till you see it, dude. It's nuts. It just yeah. looks like a vintage watch straight up. That's what it looks like. Yeah. You know? you, dude, the new Pateks are insane looking. Well, first of all, I absolutely fell off the couch when I saw that Aquanaut. The brown one? No, it's gray. Look at this. Check it out. It is. Uh, okay, let me get this. It is the greatest watch I've ever seen. It's rose gold and gray, and it's got a moon fucking phase. What? Where is that? Did you send it to me? Yeah. Uh, here. Okay. Here. Coming. At, uh, I'll send it to you again. Oh, hold on. I went to the. I went to the website. Hold on. Okay. So go to new watches. Oh dang, dude, dude! Holy shit! Look at the color of that watch. It's and blue gray. It's blue gray, dude. One of my favorite colors ever. And then look at the dial. Whoa. What? What is that thing going to cost? 200 grand? It's got to be a fortune. So you've got the, the month, the day, and then the date and a moon phase. And for some magic way, the dial does not look busy. No, they kind of, that looks, that's a pretty well-balanced dial, which, you know, I've had a big problem with modern Patek dials. They look kind of messy, messy to me. Right. Like if you go up, this 5924G is a mess. Right. (laughs) There's a lot of dials that just have too much. They're too stacked up. But like that one, they did a nice job on that. Dude, that watch destroys me. I don't even mind the rubber band, and I hate rubber bands. Oh, that's my favorite part about it. Is but that like, brown chronograph one below it, though, is the 5968R001. Oh, oh, that's sick. Come on. That one's good. And that's the impossible one to get that they made in uh, steel with the orange band and the orange hand. Yeah. That's absolutely impossible. But, dude, look at that rose gold Aquanaut, man. I mean, get a... Uh, get a look at that dial, man. It looks like an owl. Yeah, that thing bonkers. And honestly, the reality of trying to print type on that waffle dial oh. is no joke. It's it's just fucking magical. And I I love Moon Phase, dude. I love, I love Moon Phase. Both of you and I love Moon Phase. And this, I mean, if you look at just the picture of the watch from a distance, the Moon Phase looks like some Egypt. You know, oh. like Egyptian thing, like an eye. Yeah, yeah. It's wild. It's, he's one on top, though. The 6300 GR is insane looking. Hold on. Let me get here. Hold up. They're like the super grand complications. Like there's so many buttons on the side of the case. It must be like a minute repeater. Like it's moon phase minute re- repeater chronograph. Like there's another button in the main crown. Like it looks like a Patek fucked a G-Shock. It's insane. It does look like a Patek fucked a G-Shock. <laughs> that end link attack. That thing is, I don't, dude, I get that for someone, this is going to be their dream watch. That thing is insane looking. It looks like a transformer. What, dude, it looks like a dragon somehow. Dude, if one of those buttons doesn't shoot out tear gas, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Grenade. It's dude. a grenade. Dude, that thing is so... What about the 5331 Tommy Bahama model? Uh, oh, like, yeah. With the fucking boat going down the river? <laughs> dude, with the Swiss flag. Here's the truth. That's the first Patek I ever saw was one of those world times. Right. Back in the day, we're talking... 25 years ago and i was like what's a patek philippe so i love i always love i love a world time because i just love all the names i well, i mean i love old ones because you get cities that aren't there anymore that's always cool but yeah i i mean this case is too thick but it's probably i think those buttons on the side I minutes mean, a minute repeater 
I think it's a thing is nuts. It's got a fucking boat going down the river, man. <laughs> it also has a coin edge. These things are crazy. <laughs> they are crazy. They you, you see that, you know, remember that one they made last year for the opening of their new uh, store or whatever? Um, it was that limited edition one, the 6007 G. Yeah. Well, they made that. Remember, it was a limited edition last year just for a shop or their new factory or whatever. It was a, it yeah. was a, so they make it now in three colors. And I like that watch, man. It, it doesn't bother me now. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's giving me Macy's. I think it's yeah. like, yeah, I know. It's just, there's two that, that checkerboard dial thing is just a bit much. Like there's, there's like six minute tracks. You get a minute track, then another, then another line, then the numbers, then another minute track. Then you have this, this like checkerboard thing. It's just, yeah. there's a lot happening. I know, you know, it, it it's true too. Cause it does look like a, uh, like oh, a the yellow one's the best one, I think. Yeah. It, oh yeah. Totally. It, the second hand, the yellow second hand is cool. It's tough because if you were going to get a Patek, no way would you want that. You want the fucking, you want the 5711 or you want the yeah. Aqua. This is the one. This is probably the cheapest one. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I'm probably 30 grand. Yeah. It's probably 30,000 bucks, 35,000 bucks. Right. Which is, you know, the price of a car. But yeah. if you're a guy looking to buy a Patek, that's like normal price for you. Get those chronographs above it, the 5924G, they are. Uh, Awful, <laughs> oh, dude. That is like they are horrific. grandfather clock shit, dude. That is a Swiss Army watch. So just by the way, no disrespect to a Swiss Army watch. Just go buy one of those. Yeah, this thing probably costs one hundred and fifty grand, and it's a mess. It is straight up Swiss Army, man. You're so right. It's crazy. It's meat, uh, Shinola. You know, it's, Victor- it's a mess, dude. Uh, it's really just god awful. Even I'm sorry that 5905 is a mess too. I don't care. I don't care what anyone thinks of my opinion. Yeah. That thing's really. I mean, bottom line, that six, the 5261 Aquanaut Moon Phase is the greatest watch I've seen in a long, long time since. And the, dude, and the 5968. That thing's a beast. Hundred pro, hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. And you know what? They still have five of the greatest watches to me. The green hand grenade, white gold, Aquanaut, still yeah. a dream watch for me. Uh, this this new, this new Aquanaut right here, as my mom would say, rest in peace. When I win the lottery, I'm walking into fucking Pad Tech and going, dude, just get me this watch. I'll fucking buy you a car on the side. I won't tell you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because that thing is mind-boggling to me if they made that thing and steal it would be a million dollar watch yeah i mean if you speaking of steel should we look at some of these ap's oh god yeah let's do it talk uh, about unbuyable oh yeah unbuy first of all i look at the ap's and i just go like I, i'll never ap has so much great shit right now but they're all one body. They're all the fucking sick, you know, the 15202, you know? Yeah. Well, and, all the other ones, I mean, this Royal Oak concept is crazy looking. I don't mind it. It's cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that thing. That Look, thing- I, I don't, for whatever reason, I don't mind when, when a company like AP goes like full space, like oh, yeah. full outer space, carbon. You can see everything. It's just insane looking. Like, I don't mind that. Like, I think Pharrell has one of these, the carbon ones. They're cool looking because it's like full, like Darth Vader watch. And if you're insanely rich, it's a cool watch because it it looks good with like casual clothes and stuff. I like that one. The 37 Royal Oaks uh, with the turquoise dial. Oh, yeah. Come on. That I mean, that's such a nice size. <laughs> Although this all black one, the all black, that's gonna be that's gonna be a really really hard watch to get. Like every every famous European soccer player, every NBA player, like every Formula One driver, like that is gonna be the watch every really really rich athlete in the world wants. 
John Mayer on the summer dead dead and co tour. He's got yeah. that for sure on it. He's gonna eleven fifty nines are terrible. <laughs> the what's what? The the code eleven fifty nine. Oh, that thing's terrible. Also, if I'm buying a minute repeater watch, I don't yeah. want a fabric br- like uh, oh. strap. What the yeah. hell are you doing? Yeah, what are you talking about? This is a zillion dollar watch, and you're putting on like a fucking uh, like a aftermarket band. Yeah, and the one above it, the other eleven fifty nine, like I, it's okay, it's in steel, but like the way those, I don't, I don't like the the the, the lugs where there's like a hole. They're just going too hard here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, that dial, that dial looks like a mall dial. Yeah, you know these dudes. It's like they just do too much. It's almost like they know that they're known for two body shapes. Yeah. And then they go, well, let's just try to get people in the store with other taste. And I get it. Like, if you don't like that Royal Oak shape, you would never go to AP. Uh, But now they're throwing stuff out that maybe some weirdo would be like, I like the star wheel. You know, I mean, to me, this is just like the watch they make you buy to get on the list. That, that's exactly what that. But also, is. I don't want a big old open screw on the side of the lug. It just looks like a thing that's going to get loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the, what I mean? Like it's. I get that they're trying to be aggressive with the design, but I think you know, to me, the best alternative to a shape as unique as like the offshore is like a really simple watch, like that Rolex nineteen oh eight. Right. Like, that's the alternative. It's not like an insanely techy looking version of a dress watch. Oh, that's what I say, man. Like AP could make some style and grandpa watch. And well, they we- have. If you look back at their old ones, their old yeah. dress watches are beautiful. Like man. old APs are great looking. Like the old moon phases and the old, you know, the old dress watches they make are crazy and, and, and they're really nice looking. Like I don't understand why they don't just have like the AP Royals, all that craziness. And then like a heritage line that just feels like the old because they have AP has rad movements. Like yeah. they're on the level of Patek and 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 you know JLC as far as like quality of movements and stuff. So like I don't know why they don't just make a simple kind of heritage dress watch line. It's not so like wild. I tell you but what, this purple, the purple thirty seven millimeter Torbil Torbalon is pretty rad. That watch right there is so incredible to me right there. And I'm it, curious to what the rationale is would be for the thirty seven millimeters because it's like. It's like a beefy size for a, for a woman and or for a dude like my size, you know? It's kind of like perfect size for me. I like are these are, do they still make the 40 the 41 size? Yeah, they they still make the 30 it's 39. I thought the, it went up to 41 now. No, on the 16202 which is the replacement of the 15202. Uh, so they still they make 37, 39 and 41. Okay, okay. So they they make all three and the and the most popular is the thirty nine you know yeah, yeah that's the um one. but this thirty seven the thing is with these thirty sevens they won't look thirty seven because their angle they're cut so they'll look like a good size watch it won't look small yeah I mean that like that watch in steel just like silver black dial or silver dial thirty seven I would did I'd love to have that watch. I, you know, I just don't ever, ever know. There would be no way I'll ever be able to get a 16202 or any of these watches because they just, out of all of the companies, I don't know anybody at these uh, AP ever. Yeah. I've well, met I don't people. even think it's like a, it's not a thing where you can even get hooked up. Nope. <laughs> like, no. you got, it is a money thing where you got to be spending. An, a, a really wild amount of money in their boutiques. Probably, I mean, let's be honest, it's probably over a million a year. Yeah. 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 Like you got to be spending around a million a year. So you're a person that's buying jewelry, you're buying watches from them, you're buying cufflinks and shit. Like to spend a million dollars a year at AP, you'd have to go in there like once a month. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you got to go, think about that. You got to go in there once a month and spend about a hundred grand. Like that's pretty crazy, even for like someone who's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Say you're a billionaire and you're down to do that. That's still kind of like a chore. Like, oh, I got to go to AP and buy something I don't need for a hundred grand today, so I can get a fifteen two hundred two or whatever. 
Yeah, it comes down to the lunacy of like, it was like a mega when I wanted the uh, Snoopy. And then the girl pulled me aside and she said, look, I'll tell you this. Uh, I've seen people able to get the Snoopy right away once they spend around 80 grand. And I'm like, well, that's impossible to spend 80 grand in Omega, even if you get the gold moonshine uh, yeah. Speedmaster. And then you would have to buy like eight fucking watches and you're still not at 80, 80 grand. You're better off buying a Snoopy for 22 grand now, which is 12 grand more. And you save yeah. fucking 60 grand. I mean, you can get a 39 millimeter AP for probably 60 grand, right? Yep. And so you can spend a million to get it at retail for 25 or whatever it is. Yeah. Or you can just spend 60 and you saved yourself $940,000. It's so true. Once you start looking at it, you're like, well, yeah. I never spend over retail. I'll just keep buying stuff in the store until they reward me with the, uh, the you know, they're not rewarding you with anything. You're still buying the watch that you're buying. Yeah. And, and, I, and there's no way they don't keep track of these people. Like say you buy a million dollars worth of not 15, two and you're like, I'll just sell them. You don't think they're going to notice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And also, like you said, and I said, man, it's just better just to spend the extra money and and not have a fucking house full of junk you're never going to wear. Yeah. I mean, these watches are for a very specific person at a very specific income level. Yeah. And they they have everything else. A Rolex isn't inter interesting to them. Not you at know, all. A, a, a certain level of car is no longer interesting. And it's not because they're like snooty they just have it all they've had it they've had a daytona they've had a gmt they've had all the watches and they're like no i want the ap i want the rad i want the one that's hard to get that's the watch i want yeah. and so you're just like okay man you're gonna spend a grip but they have a grip so who cares yep did you see john wick just wore a simple sub on the red carpet no which is cool just a new ceramic sub he's just out there like this is what i wear I think that's the watch that celebrities get as gifts now. Yeah, yeah, probably in a bag, right? Yeah, they're just like, hey, thanks for doing the movie. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I love that guy, man, because he's he's a billionaire, but he just rolls around and just like normal hanging out with people, talking to people on the street, no entourage, no bodyguards, a sub. Just, just a cool triumph. He's just yeah. like... He's the reason I wanted a triumph. I was like, Keanu Reeves is cool. He's got a triumph. I should yeah. get a triumph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He just uh, seems like a mellow dude. I think this is the year that I will have a Grand Seiko, which is another incredible oh, watch yeah. in the under $7,500 range for people. Uh, I didn't know a lot about Grand Seiko for years. I know Kia at Self Edge worshipped him. Uh, Kevin also loved him. And they I, are the watch for, for true watch dorks, not even for normal watch dorks. It is the watch dork, watch dork watch, because the accuracy is bananas. And in the last four months, they put out some watches that have just blown my mind, including that limited edition one they just put out that was like the black ceramic, like, oh my God, this thing. Kevin and I went and looked at it and- it was incredible. We we tried them on, and what's crazy is their 40 millimeter watch wears like it's 37, 38, like it wears completely different. And I, the guy at the boutique who I loved, he was like, forget about numbers. Like, don't you're gonna I'm gonna tell you it's 40, and you're gonna be like, Oh, that's too big. You put it on the way they've designed it, it fits perfect, doesn't feel big. Like, and for me, I care so much about accuracy. Like, yeah, I can't stand when a watch loses more than 10 seconds a day. Cause like, look, these watches are really expensive. Yeah. I don't like, you know, we're talking like 3,500 is a deal. It's still quite a bit of money, right? A, lot, a lot, of lot of money. So I don't want to spend over a thousand dollars on something that loses time. Are you insane? Then what's the point? So for Grand Seiko's are wildly accurate. They're probably the most accurate mass produced watch in the world. I think. Yeah. And they're sweet looking. You're not going to get robbed. And among watch dorks, it's when dudes, when I see a dude with a Grand Seiko, it's like, oh, that guy cares about kind of the 
they care about the 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 parts of watchmaking that I think are important. Accuracy, clean design, kind of durability, value, like it's a it's a perfect watch to me. Smoke and dials. Yeah. Smoke and cool, like weird, cool patterns, cool color options, a lot of different kinds of dials, a lot of different shapes. Cause that's we went to that boutique. I went online and looked at them. There's a ton of them on like Chrono 24. You can get them in the high 2000s, 3000s. There's dress watch shape, sport watch shape. Uh, they're rad. Grand Seiko's are rad. Yep. And uh, Kevin and I went and I looked at one. It was 6,500 bucks. And he immediately went on Chrono 24 and found them for five grand brand new. So definitely look at Chrono if you're into it. Interesting, um, incredible looking dials. They've got a pink one coming out. Uh, somebody called it like strawberry uh, shortcake or something. But that's the one I want to get. It's a it's a uh, the classic automatic, like that yeah. one. I, I like the green one, but it's a pink dial. It's brand new. And it looks insane. And I, I love rock and pink. I don't care what people think. It pink, and turquoise, it great rhymes. stuff. You know? Um, I think to me, Grand Seikos are, a, if, if you're looking for a value and Tudor and Omega are just a little too like sport kind of bro -y, a little right. too like, you know, beefy, like check out my beefy watch. Grand Seiko is the perfect watch for you. Absolutely. Like it's per it's perfectly styled and man, what a value! If when you're talking about like the quality of the movement, holy shit, man! Yeah, and they just it, I like that they're all just slightly different. Like when you go to the boutique, you're like, oh, that one has a blue hand. It's just like little tiny subtleties in the dials and stuff like that. Last but not least, uh, Omega doesn't uh, take part in watches and wonders. Um, they kind of just release their own watches on Instagram these days. And, uh, so there was nothing that I, I know of from Omega. I didn't see anything. I better check real quick before people go, what are you, an idiot? They released this, but six uh, limited edition Speedmasters. Yeah, I know. Now, um, Omega has definitely become, uh, here we go. So let me look, has become my favorite in the last five years. And um, I just absolutely love the Speedmaster. So yet there's nothing here on it. And I still think that the Moonshine Gold is the greatest Speedmaster gold watch I've seen. And, and uh, the greatest gold watch I've seen in a long time. It's just really cool. And of course, their uh, Speedmaster that they updated a couple of years ago that everybody was complaining about the sharp edges. I don't hear anything about that anymore. The Sharpie, I called it. Um, <laughs> and I put one of those on a couple of weeks ago. And it's just mind blowing how great the new Speedmaster is. I put it on. I was like, wow. Do you go Hesolite? Do you go Crystal? Crystal has the uh, um, the uh, open case back. So... Yeah. You know, you're never going to go wrong with a master is a great watch and it's not heavy. That's what I like about it. It's lightweight. Yep. It's just it's it's if you don't want to wear a Rolex, if you just if you find Rolex to just feel like a little cheesy, but you want a watch that has some history to it. Omegas are the, uh, great. I've loved Omegas my whole life. As long as I've liked watches. Speedmaster was the first watch I ever bought. If you want a really historic watch, you can still get a 321 Speedmaster, an old one, for around 10 grand, which Kill that's a new watch. You know, they're just Omega rules, man. I love, and as especially as I get older now, and I want kind of weirder watches, you know, those 70s Omegas, they made some wild shit. Sick. They made some wild case shapes, and there's a lot of cool, weird stuff. I'm waiting for that reissue of the square one. That I see, dude. Yeah, that, the ten forty five or whatever it is. I, oh. I forget the number of it. But yeah, they just call it the Speedmaster TV because it's shaped like a nineteen seventies TV, it's and it's sick. great. They're cool, man. If you want, like, as I get as as I notice that, like, my style and your style, it's basically turned into a uh, weird watch with a couple bracelets, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You get like a a, a a a fabric friendship bracelet look with, the, and then some beads, and then yeah. you got a weird watch. And you're like, hey, I'm a cool old guy. Are you? I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
but we're all going to die. So have a fun. That's to me. That's what I liked about this year. As far as new watches, it's stuff. That's just kind of like fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this stuff, the colors. I just think it's like the world's in a, sh- the world's still in shambles. Yeah. So where's something a little fun. Cause time's running out people. <laughs> what watch do you want on your wrist when you die <laughs> yeah like when you see that flash of light and you're like oh it's the actual apocalypse do you yeah. want to look down at like some rainbow bubbles and be like well this is funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the nuclear bomb drop and you just look at your watch and smile like i i got the grail <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i like that there's a lot of just kind of like wackiness going on all right it, uh, uh got any shows coming up what do you got well, I, don't, I didn't call in for spots this week because I think I'm sick, so I'm going to oh, wait. Oh, yeah, that's that. right. Okay, I'm going to be in Las Vegas next week, uh, the 3rd through the 9th at the Comedy Cellar in the Rio. Also, I'll be in Austin, Texas with uh, Bill Burr, the uh, what MotoGP, and we're doing an arena out there. I don't know what it is. And then Santa Rosa just got added. Uh, they'll be on my website. Santa Rosa, I'm doing a show so uh, those are some of the I can't shows. Santa Rosa has a venue. It's just open, man. And uh, Dude, where my I mom got... lived. That's a weird place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Santa Rosa is definitely fucking. I played a lot of rock and roll in Santa Rosa. You know? Really? Oh, I yeah. I spent so much time there. And I just, I can't, I don't know what that vibe is. I don't understand what Santa Rosa is doing. It seems yeah. it's a very pretty place. It's beautiful. Everyone's very nice. But I do not understand the energy there. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's liberal, conservative. It's just quiet and and there's green rolling hills. I'm hearing there's a lot of crime now, so it's the opposite. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. I don't know. We'll see. But Santa Rosa, I'll be up there. And then uh, all my merch, DeanDelRay.com. I have the new tree hats that are out. Yeah, here's one right here. The tree. Get your tree hat. Aaron Draplin and I. Uh, collabed on this and it fucking came out great. Hit me on that. Uh, DeanDelRay.com. And uh, great to see you, Kev. And I guess that's about it. Oh, Standard and Strange. Episodes brought to you by StandardandStrange.com, my one-stop clothing shop. Kevin's been there. He's been to the Berkeley one. And they got great denim. I uh, just got a cardigan sweater there. I'm, I'm getting into the uh, old man phase. Cardigan welcome, sweater. Welcome. I'm. Yeah. Je- I'll be honest, and I, uh, Marcel, can vouch for this. I'm jealous of that cardigan. Ah, I put it. Very on. jealous of that cardigan. I put it on. I took a picture. I sent it to Kevin. He goes, "If you don't buy that, I'm buying that." <laughs> it's so good. I that love thing it. is an old man. Cl- the color is great. Yeah. Again, yeah. in much the same way, I was ahead of the curve on NASCAR shirts. You couldn't <laughs> find cardigans three years ago, and now they're everywhere. You're welcome. Yeah, men. absolutely. Cool. Man. Men with man. chilly arms. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Anyway, great seeing you, buddy. And uh, follow Kevin uh, Christie on uh, Instagram. Check out his comedy and his art. He's an incredible painter. And uh, hit me, Dean Del Rey, on Instagram. And uh, thanks, guys. Oh, and also, I got a bunch of new uh, comedy videos up. So share them in your stories, people. All right, cool. Good seeing you, buddy. Back to you soon. Later, buddy. Later.